Hi guys, Cinematic Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain an American biographical drama movie, called Father Stu. Stuart Long is an amateur boxer from Helena, Montana, with a foul mouth and a troubled relationship with his mother and alcoholic father. Unfortunately, his brother Stephen, died at the age of six, leading to a rift in the family and causing his parents to become religiously hostile. One time, his mother, Kathleen, strongly disagrees with Stu continuing to fight in the ring because she is afraid her son would get hurt, so she tells him to stop being a boxer and work like a normal person. After thinking about his mother's words near Stephen's grave, Stu decides to try his luck in California with the goal of becoming a Hollywood actor. The next morning, he moves to Southern California and gets a job in a grocery store, reasoning that everyone shops for groceries and it will be easier to get connected in the entertainment industry, but apparently his idea does not go well as all the buyers he meets have no contacts in the entertainment industry. While working in the store, he meets a woman who catches his attention, but she refuses to give her name. Because of this, Stu becomes curious and continues to track down the woman, ending up at a local Catholic parish. Although he is hostile towards religion, he still goes inside to meet the woman. While Stu is eating with the others, he befriends a fellow parishioner named Ham, but is looked down upon by another named Jacob. Not only that, he is finally told by Ham that the woman's name is Carmen. At one point, he is arrested for a DUI and attempts to steal his father's truck to make it to an audition, but he ultimately fails as his father forbids him to take the truck. After that, he goes to see Carmen and learns that she is a volunteer Sunday school teacher. She initially resists his advances, but Stu is persistent, even though she tells him that she would not even consider dating him unless he gets baptized. Unexpectedly, Stu agrees and begins the rite of Christian initiation for adults at the parish. He then starts to spend his time with Carmen, such as accompanying her while teaching on Sundays and hanging out together in cafes. He also performs penance assisted by the priest. Long story short, Stu ends up getting baptized in the parish. At the same time, Carmen starts to like him too after seeing him earnestly going through the whole process. Stu and Carmen begin dating from then on, and he later meets her parents over dinner at Carmen's home. Soon, Stu gets an apartment and tries to clean up his drinking, and lands an acting role on an infomercial. However, he faces discouragement one night and decides to return to the bar, where a mysterious man gives him some advice and tells him not to drive home, but Stu ignores the advice and drives drunk on a motorcycle. Sadly, he crashes into a car and is thrown off the motorcycle and run over by another car. Severely injured, he drifts in and out of consciousness and has a vision of the Blessed Mother, who tells him that he cannot die in vain. After a while, the paramedics finally arrive, and Stu is transported to the hospital. The doctor says that he is in a coma and tells his mother that he is going to die. Carmen also comes to see his condition and brings a Bible for him. She continues to reassure his mother that Stu will live, even though Kathleen does not believe her words. Suddenly, Stu starts moving his eyes and hands, and the doctor says that he is starting to come out of a coma. He then meets his estranged father, Bill, who visits and re-establishes contact with him, although their relationship is still very strained. After miraculously recovering, Stu returns to the bar to inquire about the whereabouts of the mysterious man who previously advised him, but the bartender does not know either. Afterwards, Carmen visits Stu while he is recovering at home, and the two have sex, which she had previously said she would not do before marriage, leading to intense regret for both of them. Stu then confesses his sin and begins to transform himself to be the man that Mary asked him to be. After prayer and discernment, he eventually decides to pursue the seminary. One morning, he asks Carmen to come with him to a restaurant where she thinks he is going to propose to her. When he tells her of his plan, she becomes disillusioned and tries to convince him not to do it. Moreover, both of his parents also fail to prevent him from doing so because Stu is a stubborn person. He then applies to the seminary and is rejected at first, thus he visits in person to appeal to the rector, who ends up accepting him after hearing all of his pleas. By this point, Ham and Jacob are also in the seminary. Ham is a reliable friend, but Jacob is something of a rival. One day, while playing basketball with fellow seminarians, Stu suddenly falls and is unable to get up on his own despite the help of the others. After that, a doctor diagnoses him with inclusion body myositis, a rare muscular disease in which the muscles continue to weaken until they cease to function, similar to Lou Gehrig's disease. Unluckily, this disease has no cure and typically does not strike people as young as he is, and the prognosis is grim. As a result, Stu is later angry with God, but he eventually comes to understand his suffering as a gift from God which draws him closer to the suffering of Christ. He decides to continue to seminary, 
although he has many difficulties in carrying out his activities. The next day, Carmen, now engaged to another man, visits him at the seminary and supports his vocation. With all his limitations, Stu can still provide enlightenment to the inmates. Sometime later, he begins losing use of his hands, so the rector tells him that he cannot be ordained, citing his inability to celebrate the sacraments of the Catholic Church. Because of that, Stu is disappointed with himself. He even crawls inside the church, wishing for a miracle for him. Meanwhile, Bill gets a voicemail from him telling him everything about Stu's current condition. He then visits Stu and brings him back to Montana, where they take care of him as his muscles continue to decay, his weight increases, and he loses the ability to live independently. After some time passes, the parishioners from Stu and Carmen's church in California petition the Diocese of Helena to ordain Stu, which is approved by the bishop. Hence, Stu is taken by his parents to a church in Montana, where he is ordained with Carmen and Ham in attendance. Since then, Father Stu begins his ministry and quickly develops relationships with people in Montana. Afterwards, he is confined to a skilled nursing facility, where he continues to minister to the people of the diocese, who flock to see him every day. Surprisingly, Jacob visits him one day, and during his confession, he admits that he never felt capable of becoming a priest and only pursued it to please his father. Father Stu assures him that there are other ways to serve God, and he should not feel pressured to do something he is not called to do. After the confession, he gives his necklace to Jacob, who thanks him and bids him farewell, sensing it will be the last time to see him. On the other hand, Bill, now baptized, attends Alcoholics Anonymous, where he admits in the group therapy that he feels partly responsible for his son's condition by his neglect and absence. In the end, Father Stu serves as a priest until his death at the age of 50. The closing credits show real images of Father Stu from his childhood and turbulent young adult life to his time in the seminary and as a priest. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.